Ladies and gentlemen, she's tired, I'm tired, but we're not tired, so tired that we can't talk with you. Hello, Ronnie Bennett. Good morning. How are you? You're fine. How are you doing? Tired. Huh? Besides tired. Besides tired. I don't know. I'm tired all the time, too. I think mine is a different reason than yours, however. Mine, I think, has to do with... Um, it's COVID related. Not that I have COVID, but that uh, because of it, I've been stuck indoors most. You're of not time. alone. You can't complain if the whole world needs. To I do. know, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to have an effect of it. You know. I uh, mean, but but the I don't know. I just don't get the point. Everyone talks about it. it. It's it's what you have to do if you would like to live. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's what you have to do if you want to live, but it doesn't mean that you're not going to have the effects of staying indoors for so much time. I mean, uh, I mean, I've been out, and I've tried to Which take is more than I've been. I've tried to take walks lately, okay, but prior to that, I hadn't been out in, jeez, uh, you know, six months. Just you know, I mean, except for a few excursions to go get provisions, but that's it. That's more than I do. I have everything delivered. Yeah. Well, I have most. We have most of our stuff delivered now. Um, how, how, how do you? What kind of delivery system do you use? Do you have friends? I use Amazon Fresh. You do use Amazon Fresh. Okay. Well, because I'm I belong to Amazon Prime, and if you pay, I mean, if you buy thirty five dollars worth of stuff, and whoever spends less than thirty five dollars at the grocery store, right? Um, it's delivered for free. Yeah. And you can pick the time. I rarely do it early enough in the day that I can get it delivered the same day, but I can get it delivered the next morning. Yeah. So I've done it two or three times. Um, everything has arrived. The only thing anything was wrong was a couple of tomatoes weren't quite as fresh as I would have bought them, but they weren't inedible. They weren't, they weren't rotten or right. anything. And, um, and, and the selection is dismal um but you know what do i eat it's not a big deal well uh um uh, i i use instacart because we we want to shop from costco and they go and pick it up and all of that you know and um, um what i find is the problem with not being able to go in and shop is especially where fruit is concerned you don't know what it's like you know when it if it comes to you. Lately, we've been ordering grapes, and the grapes have been terrific, but if we order strawberries, forget it, you know. Uh, well, that's true. When you're in the store, you just get a choice to buy or not. Yeah. Sometimes you can kind of stick your finger in there and grab a grape and see how good or bad it is, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, 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 it doesn't replace actually going out and shopping, but if you have to do this, it's okay. It works out fine. You know what it saves? It saves, uh, what's the phrase for it? You know, the stuff that you buy on the spot that you didn't plan on buying, they're not on your list. Right. Just money that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't get all the impulse buys as you're walking <laughs> out the, the door. That's the word I was looking for, yeah. You know, the uh, years ago, uh, I often said the only reason TV Guide made a living was because of impulse buying. It was always at the checkout stand. Oh, I forgot my TV guide. And uh, or, you know, or the tabloids, it doesn't matter which. <laughs> the tabloids, they were there too. Also that candy bar you always needed, you know. Count on those candy bar things at the checkout. Place. Yeah. yeah. I don't have nearly as much candy bar in the house now because there's no checkout stand. Yeah, there's no checkout stand. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we make sure we have our uh, enough of it. However, we do. Marjorie does go up to. We have a place called Stu Leonard's out here. You mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they don't have them in the rest of the country, but we have them out here. And she goes up there with her friend. Uh, it's like a little path you go down buying stuff. You have to take this path. And she comes back with <coughs> these link sausages that are just terrific. They're made by Stu Leonard's. And she comes back with these potato chips made by Stu Leonard's that are the greatest potato chips I've ever had in my life. They're huge, they're crispy, they're tasty, but you got to eat them within about three days, otherwise they go stale. So that's our shopping out of here. Yeah. I just, you know, get what I need, and it comes once or twice a week. Really? 
So, uh, how have you been feeling? I'm. I've had a bad week. A bad week. Yeah. 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 I discovered. I think. I mean, you know, nothing is ever going to get better in my life. Right. Right. <laughs> we know where this goes, but um, but I've discovered that for all of the an enormous number of drugs I take for different things, uh, the most important drug is sleep. And over the past 10, 12 days, I've gone three nights, not all at once, but over that period of time, three nights without a single wink of sleep and with drugs and everything. And I discovered that whatever else is going on in my body that needs treating from day to day, hour to hour or mm -hmm. whatever, um, it's the sleep that means everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. I think it also improves uh, the efficacy of drugs. Mm -hmm. um, and one morning I got up and tried to stand up and fell back on the bed. My legs wouldn't hold me up. I had not slept all night. <clears throat> and, um, and it was like that all day that I just could barely move. And, uh, and when you're that tired, you don't want to do anything. You don't want to get dressed. You don't want to shower. You don't want to eat. You don't want to. Right. Do and you have to. You have to, or you're not going to stand up again. You know. <laughs> um. So, in the last three nights, just jiggering around with drugs and what time I go to sleep and which sleeping potion I take or don't take, um, I've kind of evened it out and for. Last night, I had a great night's sleep. I feel much better today. And I slept mostly the night before. So it's what, the thing I've learned is that it's all about sleep, number one. And two, whatever you thought yesterday was all about, mm -hmm. different today. <laughs> it's a different set of rules today. Yes. Yeah. But by the <laughs> way. I mean, yeah. this is, you know, I took care of my mother when she was dying and she didn't say much about what went on. She just never got out of bed. When I arrived, she went to bed, and she stayed there for the five months until she died. Um, and other people that I've known. Uh, and also books that people write who are in my predicament. Mm -hmm. um, they don't tell you the real stuff, the re this real day-to-day -day stuff. Yeah. And I would appreciate, not that it would have been the exact same for me, or what goes on with me would be the same for you or anybody else. Right. But you get a general idea that, oh, this is not what life was before. You know, and it's going to be really different now and <clears throat> and go with the flow for as long as, in my case, because I do have those end-of-life drugs, I can go with the flow until I said this is, till the day comes when I say this is too much, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. But I would, have, I would have appreciated knowing, I maybe don't want the gory details, but appreciate knowing some of what's going to come at me. There's no handbook, is there? No. no. And yeah. I've thought about writing one because there are all kinds of little things I have learned that ease the day. Mm -hmm. um, and that, uh, and so I thought about writing it, but, you know, it's not a book. It would be a booklet. It's not huge. Um, one of the most interesting ones uh, I was surprised to learn, and the nurse, <clears throat> my hospice nurse confirmed, is how tiring talking is. Mm -hmm. In my case, not cancer so much. Well, I have l cancer in my, one of my lungs, but also um, COPD, is that it takes a lot of energy to push air out to talk. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand how tiring that is. So that <clears throat> sometimes if I'd been talking for a while, I just, <sighs> you know, I'm going for breath and have to grab the oxygen. <laughs> and I had no idea that could happen. We go our whole lives chattering, 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 you know, and it doesn't bother us. Yeah. Little things like that that I didn't know um, that I'm learning. Yeah, that you're learning. Uh, as I say, there's no there's no handbook, and, and, uh, and then again, everybody dies differently. 
You know, I mean, there, there are different circumstances. You could write a, a, a book based on your experience, but then I could get run over by a Mack truck, okay, uh, as an example. Well, I, those aren't the choices, but... Yeah, exactly. Um, but, I mean, mostly, I mean, I've got this this little book that the hospice gave me. Mm -hmm. How do I do this? Gone from my sight. From my sight. Of the dying experience, and it tells you... Everything that anybody, everybody dying would go through of what happens in terms of food, um, what happens one or two weeks before, the physical changes from blood pressure and temperature and skin color, and then right before death, what you expect to happen and so on. And, and those are general. Those happen mm -hmm. to people. I mean, they probably won't with me. At least not as much of them, because I'll be taking those drugs at some point. Mm -hmm. But if you aren't doing that and just fading away, I guess you would say, mm -hmm. you, most people will go through those stages. And um, uh, and, it, and it pretty well matches what my mother went through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A couple of other friends that I helped take care of. Right. Well, let's get away from that for a second, okay? Uh, did you watch? It's very interesting you said nobody ever wants to talk about that, and I no. always do. No, I let you go as long as you want to. I just figured maybe you'd like to change the subject, you know. Uh, and today, when I talk, I get tired. I, I, I get tired weird. or breathless? Huh? Tired or breathless? Uh, just tired. I can feel like lightheaded, you know. Yeah. So, I don't know. <laughs> weird. Anyway, did you see the debate last night at all? I watched 20 or 30 minutes and turned it off. What's the point? Exactly. Exactly. I was sitting there. The only time that I felt re really good was when Biden looked at him and said, will you shut up? I mean, oh, I didn't make it that far. <laughs> that, that is something we've all wanted. You know, we yell that at our TV screen whenever Trump is on. Will you shut up? You know, you know that? That's very interesting you say that. I had the, you know, I listened to either CNN or MSNBC on my little Alexa thing. You know, you're, nobody needs to see those pictures. People just chatter and you yeah, can yeah. listen to it like radio. And I find myself all day yesterday saying that to them. Just shut up. I mean, they, Rachel Maddow and oh. blah, blah, all of those people on those shows, they just blah, 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 blah saying the same thing over and over and over again. I, they don't ever have any news. Well, has anybody told them that a presidential debate is not covered in quite the same way that you cover a football game? Like, well, oh, who do you think is going to win? Who do you think is going to win tonight? That. What should his strategy be? Blah, 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 <laughs> blah. I mean, I, I hate Rachel Maddow. I hate most of those people on MSNBC. And they're the ones I'm supposed to root for. Okay. Well, they just repeat the same things again and again all day. I mean, you know, I'm stupid. I could just turn the damn thing off, yeah. which I eventually did. But um, it, uh, I, I, I would. There's so much other news in the world that we're not getting because it's all Trump all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You know what else has happened that I hadn't really paid attention to? It's been there all along is back in the day, there used to be all news radio stations. Mm -hmm. so every 30 minutes, they would start over again and give you the headlines. Somebody dropped a bomb on some obscure country or, you know, an airplane went down or somebody got shot somewhere or a movie star died or whatever the news was of the hour. Mm -hmm. And then they went on with maybe a little commentary. There's no place to go for that anymore. No. No. The, the cable channels don't do that. No. They just pick a topic for the last four years it's been Trump, and that's all they talk about. Well, Trump has learned how to monopolize the news cycle. And, no, they and, don't, don't blame well, it on well, Trump. They're grown-up well, people. Well, wait a minute. Let me finish. Let me finish what I was going to say. He has monopolized <coughs> the news cycle, and these people have been the What's the word I'm looking? What when a person helps somebody's narcotics habit? Uh, he's called a, a uh, bet. Uh, well, he a bet. A bet. They've been abetting the whole thing because they're in in they're encouraging him, you know. They're facilitating. But, they, but they're grown up. 
Yeah, they're grown-ups. They should know better, or their producers and their editors should know better. But they allow them to do all Trump all the time. And you know what? He has less to say than I do. And I don't have much to say these well, days. I'll but. tell you something. If anybody, when you say, well, <clears throat> who can we blame on Trump being president today? We could say, yes, it's the American public that voted for him, and they can't get off the hook on this one. But also, MSNBC is a good example of why he got elected, because they gave him so much free publicity, he didn't have to buy time on their damn TV stations. You know? I mean, he knew how to manipulate them and play them like a violin, and they went right along with it. You know, it's I don't give him that much credit. I just think he babbles and people follow. He doesn't plan it. Well... I mean, come on, everybody, nobody's going to avert their eyes from a car crash by the side of the road, right? But I think we're over the car crash about three years ago. Well, we should be. <laughs> we should be, but are we? Yeah. And I, I just don't care what he has to say. Every single morning, I've said this on this show before, every single morning I wake up, I brush my teeth, I start at the car. By the way, my electric tea kettle died this morning. That was an irritation. And um, and, I'm near, and I burned my hand boiling water in a saucepan. Um, <laughs> As though things aren't bad there, enough. <laughs> there are days you should not get out of bed. And, uh, and, uh, and you know, I go through all that, and then I fire up the TV, I fire up the computer and turn on one of the news channels, the audio on it anyway. And every single day, it has never failed in four or five years. Every single day, the first time I hear, first thing I hear is Trump said something outrageous I could never have guessed he would say, that he would go that far. Every day it's new. Every single day. How does he do that? Well, his first thought when he wakes up in the morning is, how can I piss <laughs> off Ronnie Bennett? <laughs> <laughs> now he's decided, I just saw somewhere on my, on my phone just before we hooked up, that oh well, I've lost it, but it was some who's oh, there was some ship that was supposed to stay docked somewhere, and he said, "No, let it let it go where it's supposed to go, and let the people get off." Um, yeah. Everything, everything he does harms, maims, or kills somebody. Am I the only person who remembers that there are thousands of little children? who will never, ever see their mothers and fathers again, that well, they were separated and will never, ever be uh, gotten uh, together? Uh, yeah, we've almost forgotten that because COVID came along. And it, again, <coughs> let's, let's look at people like MSNBC. Uh, they find their uh, thing to gin up for the day. And that was ginning up months ago before COVID. COVID came along and was a mana from heaven for them. And so all of a sudden, these kids, what, what's happening to these kids? We don't know what's happening to them. Nobody's well, reporting The government on doesn't it. even know. They didn't keep track of them. They don't know where they no, are. What's happening to them right now, you know? I think that's what I said, but okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's not being reported on, is what you're saying and what I'm saying, you know? Because we are a nation of, uh, uh, of, uh, of people who are now reporting based upon... Uh, what keeps their interest, you know, or what's going to get them an audience. They're constantly ginning it up, ginning it up. And I don't care if they're Fox or they're MSNBC or they're CNN, they're all ginning it up rather than just reporting the news. It's terrible. I'm really deeply concerned for our country. I, I oh. think that that's the trimming, what you're talking about. I've given up on it. I, I don't think... I'm not sure that if Biden is elected, I'm not sure that's going to change very much. That Trump is going to, well, first of all, he's going to stretch out the election for as long as he possibly can. Mm -hmm. I think the way it works, I'm not certain, maybe you've read or no. I think the way it works, that if there's no definitive answer yet in counting ballots by January 20 that Nancy Pelosi becomes president. That's right. Is that right? That's correct. 
but I don't think he's going to let that go that easily. He will come up with something. Oh, he will. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And he can go to and the I'm he can go to the Supreme Court, which is going to be loaded on his side. You know. So what has to happen uh, on uh, November third is there has to be such a decisive slaughtering of his <laughs> side that there's no way that he can excuse it. You know. Alex, no jokes now for a moment, okay? Okay. No jokes, no snideness, no uh, that's the way it is kind of stuff. What do you think, who are the people who no matter how much Trump lies, how much his lies are shown up, proven, mm -hmm. no matter how nasty mean, monstrous he is, there are all of these millions of people who can continue to support him. I don't, I read all those stupid psychiatrists, they don't know any more than I do. Nobody can explain it. Uh, what I, the only way I can explain it is there's a whole group of people who are enablers, that was the term I was looking for earlier, of Donald Trump, and those enablers are the Republican Senate. That doesn't explain it. I mean, if you want to say who... That doesn't explain how it works. I mean, why... I can't understand why these Republicans are uh, giving him an excuse and Do enabling him... Like well, the point is, the point is, people? he is doing nothing but ruining their brand. He is ruining their brand. And, and they do nothing to stop him. They just support him. Oh, and they make this excuse and that excuse. I mean, the minute he's not elected president, they're going to say goodbye to him and start backing somebody else. But in the meantime, they're supporting him. And that's, you that's know... That's what I'm asking. That's not the answer. Right? I, I, okay, quite... then my answer is I don't have an answer. Okay. Political expediency on the part of those people in the Senate, on the what part the of the government? American public, on the part looks of, like hey, even McConnell might lose now. Even uh, the American public, uh, who voted for him, are uh, I, I guess I just have to say stupid or naive or think that this world is a television show, and because he was on The Apprentice, I guess he was playing his role. Well, that's the best answer I've heard so far. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, we, we do worship empty celebrityhood, you know? Mm -hmm. So you, well, maybe you're the best actor in the entire world who ever lived. So now we believe you about everything? I mean, it, we do this to our celebrities, that we make them responsible or not even responsible, but we, we vest them in wild intelligence because they're good at one thing. Yeah. Um, and of course, that's stupid, but we do it. Um, but it, I, I, I don't understand. You know, I've never been a flag waving patriot. I believe in the Constitution. I deeply believe in the Constitution. I, I believe in our country. I believe in its goals. I know we're not perfect, but up until the last five or six years, we've done pretty well. A lot of mistakes, but. This progress has always been made. No more. We're going, we're so far backward. Oh. I don't know that there's coming back. Yeah. I don't want to get back to where we were, to we believe in each other. We believe in good and right and fairness. And and I, I don't know how we get, we don't seem to have any sense of that anymore. Can I ask you one last question because we run out of time? And that is, you seem to be investing yourself in all of this, and yet you know that your time is limited. Why yes. don't you just say to yourself, screw it, I'm not going to be here, let them sort it out? I do, sometimes. But then I watch, even, I didn't even watch the whole thing last night. And, and I care, I really care. I can't change anything. I can't make anything different, and you're absolutely right. It won't be long before I'm gone, and it's not my problem. It's not even my problem now. I'm not in a position to do anything. Um, but how can you not care? This great 250-year experiment mm -hmm. hasn't gone all wrong until now. 
Um, and it's been, it's given me a good life. And I want that for everybody else. And it doesn't look like it's going to be there. That, that is terrible. And I care. And with that, we'll bring this to a close. Thank you, dear. <laughs> Ronnie Bennett, you can read her at timegoesby.net. Thank you, dear. Thank you, darling. See you Take in a couple care. of weeks. Bye.